the cabin. On a fall day in 2001, I thought it a wonderful idea to rent one of those log cabins out on Montesano Mountain in Alabama. It would be perfect and reasonably priced for a long week with my two sons. Most all had windows offering a stunning view and a tree-covered mountain valley and its colored quilt of leaves would be a breathtaking sight. The porches off the back of the cabins had barbecue grills and the thought of grilling burgers and watching the sun slip behind the hills would be lovely. The decision was made for long walks on the trails and time together and the day arrived to much excitement and we entered the cabin. Number 22. There was a small kitchen and two bedrooms were off the spacious living room. The boys tossed their sleeping bags on the cots and ran back outside and explored the area. We enjoyed the trails and had our first barbecue and settled in exhausted for our first night. I could hear off in the distance an approaching storm was announcing its arrival. I got up to check the door and look outside the huge picture window at the scene of the lightning just starting to streak the sky. It was beautiful. I went back to bed and laid awake as the claps of thunder exploded in the distance and burst of lightning lit up the bedroom. Soon I drifted off to sleep. And then I remember a terrible nightmare, so vivid that I swore I was awake. And it took the very breath from me. I was in the same bed my heart was pounding against my chest, and I was drenched in sweat. I was pinned to the bed by an invisible force, and I could see the empty room with each flash of lightning, yet I could not move. Not my hands, not my feet, not my head, just my eyes, and I scanned around the room to look for this invisible force that was holding me down, or was it just fear? Flash! The lightning lit up the room, and I knew instinctively I was not alone. As if to echo the thought, thunk, a wet thud at the foot of the bed trapped my heart in its grip as I stayed there, helpless. Thunk! This time I almost felt the bang at the foot of the bed vibrating on the floor. It sounded huge, and somehow wet is the only way that I can describe it. The thought that this was a dream went through my head and I remember saying to myself, wake up, wake up, wake up. But I was still there, trapped in that bed. I squeezed my eyes closed and I said a prayer over and over and over in my head. Thump! An invisible something punched at the bottom of the bed, right between my feet. My eyes flashed open and nothing was there. Thump! A wet, dragging sound that seemed to move away, and I stretched my vision as far as I could see what was making this noise. Oh, just wake up, just wake up already, I said to myself, and what I hoped was an empty room. In the lightning's flash, I saw something, something in the corner, by the door, huge, and black, almost like a shapeless glue, gooey blob. It slithered out the door and took a turn towards my son's room. Flash! The lightning went off, and I saw that it was gone. I heard a th thud, but it was further away. And in the dream, it ended. I woke up startled in the new surroundings and the sun was just coming through the window. I quickly sat up. I was soaked with sweat, surveyed around the room to get my bearings. Oh, wiped my hand over my head. Oh, it was just a dream. I leaned forward toward the end of the bed, just looking for anything that might be out of place there. Oh, phew, nothing. You're losing it, girl, I told myself. That was a humdinger of a dream. 
I shook it off and I got up and quick ran and checked on the boys who were asleep. One had fallen asleep with the flashlight on and I clicked it off and I pulled the sleeping bag up around him. I quick got dressed and I made some coffee and a little breakfast. When the boys got up, the bustle started. Talk about the wicked storm floated over the smell of pancakes and bacon. Smiling, I asked them if they were ready to take on the blue trail, the one that goes down and round the side of the mountain today. The trails all had color names, and Big Blue, as they called it, was a favorite. I guess, said my little one, I didn't get much sleep. An odd feeling hit me when he said this, and I clutched my coffee cup a little harder. Oh, I answered. Why is that? I was up all night. Something was in my room, and nobody would wake up or answer me when I yelled. I, I didn't hear you. Mom, I screamed loud. I swear I saw it with my flashlight. Something big and black, like a huge garbage bag filled with goo. Oh, you're just dreaming, you goof, said my older son as he kind of punched him in the arm. Well, it was loud, and it hit my bed, and it banged on the floor, and it smelled bad, too. For reasons only boys know, they both laughed at this. I was nowhere near laughter. My head spun with the realization my dream was a living nightmare, but I didn't want to scare them. I held it together, and I told them I was going to see if Mr. McGee, the cabin manager, and I was going to ask him if he had a larger cabin. And the stove wasn't working that good, so pack up your stuff, and we'll go see him before we hit the trails. They finished with a chorus of, Oh, Mom, with mouths full of pancakes. I tried my best to shudder from the inside out as I can continuously scanned the room over my coffee cup. Down at the big log cabin manager's office, I left the boys out front in the car. They were punching each other and laughing, which was a normal I was okay with right now. Hey, Mrs. Harper, how's the stay? Came a voice from behind the big bear statue that was carved with a chainsaw by no other than the owner of this voice. Hey, Mr. McGee, um, it's okay. I tried to start off positive. The view is lovely. He smiled as he came from behind the counter and the bear. I ordered it just for you, he joked. I laughed a little and asked him if we could move to another cabin. Why, sure. I have one further down the path. That be okay? Yes, I will take it and handed him the key. Is there anything wrong with this one? as he reached out and took the key from my hand. No, not really. It is lovely. Just some banging and sounds all night. Oh, well, must be some raccoons up in the roof space. I'll have to take a look into that. Been a while since I rented that one. I had a long border there for, oh, stayed almost a year. Old Bob. Poor guy loved to fish down at the lake. One day, poor guy, he lost his footing and fell in. Hit his head on one of those rocks and drowned. Awful thing. About a month or so back. Took them a while to find him, too. When they pulled him out, he was darn near all black with that river moss. My eyes widened as he handed me the key. Will you be staying long? 